give you the one half into the 16m. So it's going to be 8m plus 1 plus 2. And then you're going to distribute the 1 third into the 24m and the 18. So it's going to be 8m minus, yeah, 6. Okay, does everybody understand that? Make sure they do. Does they see why that? Um, oh, okay. And so then you're going to do um, 8m plus 3 equals 8m minus 6. And then you're going to do, you're going to add to 6 on both sides. Okay, let's take care of that first. Um, so then it basically cancels out. So 3 plus 6. Negative 6. What does that mean? No solution. And what does that mean? No, no solution. Ain't no answer. Good job. Thank you. Good job. So, because it gives you a false or absurd answer, you can't answer it. Right? Um, now, a couple explanations. First of all, going from here to here might be a little bit of a stretch for some of you. Yes. What, what is 1 half times 16 is the same thing as if I wanted to, I could write 16 over 2m plus 2 over 2 plus 2 equals 24 over 3m minus 18 over 3. See? That's just an extra step, right? But maybe that will help you see, I'll just make this a little smaller. That makes sense. Now it makes sense, right? Because, um, okay. Now, what happened to our bowling ball method, though? Remember that? What happened to that? Did we throw it out the window? Remember in the past I said, you know, just knock out the fractions, but we went ahead and distributed How can we just went ahead and distributed this? Why did we just do that, Bernadette? Because the M was in the parentheses. Because the, sorry, we couldn't hear you. The what? Was it because the M was in the parentheses? No, it's mostly because that the 2 went into 16 and the 2 went into 2. Oh. Because they were already kind of set up to fall, they were already set up that way. And because those were, they divided, you know, even into them, that was why it worked out so well. Um, but we could have, could we, could we have multiplied both sides by 6? Yes. We could have done it the bowling ball way, the way that we know, right? Yeah. Multiply everything by 6? Sure. That would work. That's the way we look. We kind of set equals 1 third onto 24m minus 18. And this is 1 half, okay? So if we multiply both sides by 6, why 6? Why are we picking 6? Yeah, back there. Whose hands up back there? Where are you Desiree's hands up. Yeah. Desiree, Connor, whatever. Who's going to uh, Because why? the half and the one-third are multiplying, therefore you have to multiply 2 times 3. Yeah, the denominators, and, and again, what into, makes these fractions, the 2 and the 3, the denominators make them fractions. And what can you get... What number can you multiply by that will knock the denominators out in one fell swoop? Six. Six, yeah. Six. Right? Because six, two goes into six, right, Jonathan? Three goes into six, right, Bernadette? Yep. And it works. If we just picked two there, it wouldn't work for three. If we picked three there, it wouldn't work for two. So why not 12? Why not 12? Too big. Too big. Yeah. yeah. Now we're going to finish it off. So the 6 goes into 2 how many times, Johnny? 3. So then this is 3 on the 16m plus 2. And then we don't forget, we have to multiply that. That becomes 12. 3 goes into 6 how many times, Jonathan? 2. 2. Let's try this one more time. Let's see if we can get a response out of Johnny. Oh, I'm sorry. Jonathan? Oh. Okay. Why is that 12? Yeah, by 6, right? We've got to do our, our rainbows there. It's just bigger, it's harder. 3 times 16 is 48. Right? It's a lot, it's a lot more difficult to, to get. You know, there's a lot of big numbers and stuff like that. You know, there's much more that you have to deal with in terms of adding. You have to multiply 3 times 16. 2 times 24 is 48M. 
And, you know, it's just a lot more difficult to deal with that. 2 times 18 you have to deal with is 56. You know, I don't think it's that big a deal, but, you know, it's still... Uh, but you're still going to get the same thing. You've got 48M, right, plus 18 equals 48M minus 56. Those cancel. You get 18 equals 56, which is false, and it means no solution. And that's the way it goes, okay? Same thing, different manner, different method, but the same idea. Oh, right, so a minus 7x equals p, this is a literal equation. Okay, this is called a literal equation. Right, why are they called literal equations? Anybody know? Because lit means letter. Letter, for litter, letter, or letter, litter, or whatever. A minus 7x equals p, good job, that's good. Uh, John? What are we looking for here? We're solving for? X. Yep. Yeah. Solve for x. How do we solve for x? I do not know. Yes, we do. What do we got to get out of the way? We got to move something. Something's got to move. We don't move the x. The x is the treasure. We don't move it. If the treasure is hidden away under some old elm tree, it's not going to move. You got to find it and move everything out of the bit's way. Robin. Seven? We gotta move to seven, but first, what do we move first? Oh, the A. The A. A. Adam, how do we move that A? How do we move it? I know. How do we move it? How do we move it? Yeah, how do we move it? How do we get it's over here on its own? We add it. Multiply. Multiply, that'd be A squared. Shall we just guess? Yes. <laughs> Bernadette, what do you do? Uh, uh, no, no, no. Subtract it. Yes, good job, Bernadette. So now what are we left with? What do we say there, Katrina? Um, negative 7x equals p minus a. Oh, right, simple as that, yes? And then, Katrina? And then you divide by negative 7. Yep. So, See. you get uh -huh. x equals p minus a over negative 7. Nice one. Good job, all of you, nice one. So that's pretty straightforward, right? Let's move on over to 3x equals 12m plus 6n. Honestly, doesn't look too hard. Have you finished, Cal? Can you print them up, please? Yeah, Charlie. I think you just divide uh, 3. I think you're right. I, I, I would agree with him on that. I think Charlie's a genius. Charlie has become sharper, I noticed, and that's good. So x equals 25. Actually, 20. Yeah, 20. So is that the end of the story on this question? 12n plus 6n over 3? Nope. Caleb, what do you think? Is there anything? That would be fine, right? Can we move, can we make it look somewhat, can we do it like, or? 4n plus 2n. Yeah, I think you do that, Taylor. I think you just got put on the spot. We're solving for x, but x is on the bottom. There's a couple ways, to, how do we deal with proportions? Anybody remember? Cross, uh, cross multiply, that's one way, right? So, what do we do when we cross multiply? What do we get? We're talking like that times that and that times that, Connor? Huh? Emily? Yeah. What do we get? This times that equals what? XB. XB, right? Equals? Equals A, B, A. A times A. A times A is equal to what? A times A is A. A squared B. A squared. Oh, I see. I knew that. A squared B. A times A B. Yeah. Now we're still not there yet. We are, we're trying to solve for x. X marks the spot. There's only one thing in the way. Let's. Charlie. Divide by B on both sides. Divide by B on both sides. Let's cancel that bad boy. What are we left with? <gasps> x equals ramen. A squared. X equals A squared. My oh, wait, no, X. You're right. Bueno vista. <laughs>